So welcome back to the second part, the weird part that um, is related to this lock. I will quickly um, no, I don't. I don't reassemble this lock. Um, I just put it in like this and put this on top uh, where it belongs to, and then I will quickly reassemble it so that I can demonstrate what I want to do. So now the plug is moved inside and the bolt is locked in place and when I release the uh, core you can imagine what happens. Do this with a screwdriver. Wow, it shoots out. So the question now is can we somehow calculate the height of this bolt shooting out when it's perpendicular to the ground. So let me move the camera to show you what I mean. So my question is, can we do some measurements and calculations in order to find out how high this bolt will um, fly when we release the, um, um, the barbarian that holds the bolt in place? suddenly. So I think we can do that and that will be the weird part. We'll do some math and some physics in order to figure out how high this will fly and then we will measure the height and see how close we got. Hold on. Okay, let's do some pre-considerations. Um, we want to find out the height of this bolt that it can reach being accelerated by the spring. So what I want to do to find this out is I'm doing an energy um, consideration. So if this bolt has reached a certain height, then it has gained uh, potential energy, which is um, determined by the height and the weight. So that's one, um, that's one part. So that's the energy that it has gained um, on this height. And it must be equal to the energy that we have put into the spring by compressing it. And compressing the springs means that we apply a force that is stronger and stronger the more we push it in. And we push it in a certain amount and we um, apply a certain amount of force to do that. So with all these um, properties we can make an equation and we can calculate the expected height of this bolt. So let's do some math and some physics. Let's expect the spring has been expanded and the mass, the bolt of mass M, has its maximum acceleration reached and now flies off and reaches a certain height H. So then the potential energy is given as m times g times h. We want to calculate h. We know g, that's the gravity um, acceleration. It's about 9.81 meters per square second. And the potential energy is yet unknown, but we have Another um, part of this situation, we have the compression part, so we have the spring and we have the mass and we compress the spring. That means we compress the spring by a certain uh, distance, x, and we know that the force um, at this point of the compression is k times x, where k is an unknown constant that is specific um, to the spring. And we do know that the energy that we put in the spring by compressing it um, 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 by the distance x is one half k x squared and that's because um, the force is the derivative of the energy 
by the distance and that's exactly uh, kx if we derive this by x. So that's the energy, the I say spring energy, which is equal um, to the potential energy. All right, we can eliminate k uh, from this equation. So k equals f divided by x. And so we then can calculate the spring energy as one half times k, which is f divided by x times x square, which is a, a half f um, times x. And that's all we need. We can measure the force f, we can measure the distance x. So we now can do the, um, we can now put in uh, the left and the right equation together. So we have m times g times h equals a half f x square. Well, and then we can calculate h, um, which is a half f. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> um, that's of course only x. A half um, f x divided by um, m g. So the height of the boat should be equal to the force, the maximum force um, of the spring compression times the distance that we compress the spring divided by the mass of the boat and divided by the gravitational acceleration. So let's measure f, x and m and do some math. So here's my scale and I have the bolt here. I can just put it on the scale and it weighs uh, 18 gram, which is 18 times 10 to the minus three kilograms. So I'm always calculating in SE units. All right, now we need to uh, figure out the distance of the spring compression and its force. So the lock is reassembled and the bolt is under spring tension and when I release the core, it will shoot out. So first let's see if we can find out the distance the spring has compressed. When I use my high precision ruler and put it to the side here, we can see that it zeroes just in the middle of this part here. So I can hopefully Pull this out and see without spring tension, like this, the distance. And it's, well, I would say about 0 0.9 uh, centimeters. So let's write that down. X is 0 0.9 centimeters, which is 0 0.9 times 10 to the minus 2 meters, right? Okay, now we need to figure out the force that is required to push this in the approximate 1 centimeter. So, to measure the force that is uh, required to compress the spring, I first zero the scale with these two items because this will go uh, on top and then I push it down and I have marked this with a, a sharpie. I don't know if you can see that. I've marked this with a sharpie so that I can know how much uh, compression I need. And that's about, let's say 1.1 kilogram. So we have the force given as 1.1 kilogram times g, of course, which equals ten point eight, ten point eight uh, Newton. All right, so let's put these values into the formula to calculate h. 
So we get approximately half a meter. That's quite um, a lot of height. I don't think that we can reach this height. Um, we have some inaccuracies because the spring also needs to accelerate this plate here and there is friction. So I think we will not get a half a meter but um, let's find out and do some measurements. So here's my setup. I think I will use a screwdriver because this the screwdriver can more quickly release the bolt. So I pull it down to the distance that I've marked before and let it shoot. I think it reached about this height. It's not half a meter. Let's do it again. Okay, one more time. It's about this height, I would say. Let's measure that. That's about 24 uh, centimeters, so maybe only a quarter of the height that we calculated. But as I said, we do have friction in there and we do have a little additional mass. The spring has to accelerate and taking this into account, um, um, we understand the inaccuracy um, of the calculation. So, I hope you had enjoyed this little um, deviation to math and physics. Until we meet again, cheers and bye-bye. Okay, I tore the lock completely apart to see um, how much this uh, little plate weighs. And I tested it on the scale and it weighs uh, below 1 gram. So this cannot be the reason for the inaccuracy. So put this to the side. Yeah, we have the outer sleeve and the inner part and that's how the spring looks like. And um, I will put also the outer sleeve away and I will try to shoot the bolt only uh, with this configuration. Maybe we can get rid of some uh, friction and see how much uh, height we can get with this setup. So. That's my ruler for measuring the height. Here is my inner part with a hole to guide the bolt and that's the spring. I put the spring in the hole here, put the bolt on top of it, push it down, hold it on the edge here with my screwdriver and let it fly. That was a bit... it wasn't quite straight so let's try it again. It was not bad, but it wasn't the full, full extent of the spring compression. Now let it fly and it flew about here. So, um, is this in the view? Yeah. So from here to, to there it's 30 centimeters and then we have additionally 20 centimeters, which is half a meter. <laughs> Funny coincidence, huh? <laughs> All right. So, hope you had fun watching this video. And until we meet again, cheers and bye-bye.